Okay, we're back down to the match. Players have got their hands. We can see a six versus a seven. Remember, we've got the giveaway. So we're going to, you know, if you manage to win that giveaway, which Anu is literally about to pick the winner of, if you have won, make sure you DM him on either Twitter or on Twitch, and we'll give you those free codes, courtesy of Daybreak Games. Remember, there'll be some more giveaways happening on later on, so you need to stick around on both channels if you want to give yourself the best possible chance to get, you know, a free drafty on Daybreak. Why wouldn't you want that? Looks like Mason I'm going to scream, Will. I'm plate. sorry you're taking too long, but he's got the force of vigor. Let's go. I couldn't hold it in. Oh, it's, my God. It, it's not going to be as relevant here as you think. You know, we were saying that, obviously, if he has the, the Urza saga into Amulet, it would be, turn one would be absolutely backbreaking. And Canister knows he's going to get got by it as well. He was saying it in between his coverage. Dude, this is so funny. Like, literally from the beginning of the broadcast, since Deckless were posted, I was like, Mason's like, all right, it's going to be so funny. It's going to be so funny. It's going to be... And there's a Dryad and an Urza saga. So I think Mason is literally going to get to live the dream. It's it's going to be a good turn, uh, turn two here. Get ready to get the um, the oofs going in chat. Here oh my goodness. He's, Here's the saga. He, no extra lad drop. Mason can't click it quick enough. And there's three <laughs> primeval titans left in the hand here. Mason, you just know that Mason's like, he, Mason's eating some beans tonight. You know what I mean? The thing is, like, we can see Callister's face on camera and we can see his reaction to that. And he's just like, ah, oh, I knew it was coming. I knew it. It, <laughs> it is what it is. So now he's now missing lands. He has got triple Titan in hand. Oh, right, it's gonna be it's gonna be a very uphill battle. But you know, what I mean, if anybody can get out of this, it's gonna be Canister, and this is gonna be on this deck. Yeah, there's really only one way to to go about this. I mean, it, it's it's going to end pretty violently for one player or the other. You know, if if Canister actually gets to that six mana, it's gonna be turn after turn after turn of just like. I mean, okay, it's probably going to be one singular turn where three primeval titans all come down. Uh, but so, so the impetus is going to be here on, on on Mason to just close out as fast as possible. Yeah, I guess Mason's going to have to find a get solid shoe to be really good here because the leyline binding is going to fill with the first titan, but that's going to already pit loads on the battlefield or the extra lands, which means we're going to just start chaining off these primeval titans. If Mason keeps just drawing land like this, it's going to be pretty rough for him. But remember, when that leyline Ley Ley binding does come down. He will draw himself an extra two cards, being very patient with it. You notice, you know, he could fire it off now and potentially just get the bundle grazer and draw two cards, but he knows that the good, there's a good chance the Titan's going to be coming down in the next round or two. <laughs> okay, well, I guess this this Vesuva is going to come into play as a copy of the Celestine Sanction. So, so now, yeah, I mean. Canister is going to be asking the question next turn. He, if 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 Canister wins this game after having tanked the main deck Force of Vigor, I am going to absolutely lose it. That's going to be so funny, dude. You, have you seen this deck? This deck is so powerful when it goes off. It's it's so explosive. And I always say, I, re, I think the reason that Titan doesn't put up the results that it probably should is because it's so hard to pilot. If you get people that really dedicate their craft to this, like we see, like Dom Hari is obviously one of the names that sticks out for this. Canis is definitely one of the names that sticks out. This deck is so powerful. And here comes the first Primeval Titan. Mason's gripping on satellite line by an all for the game, being super patient with it. He's going to get to draw three cards this turn, as well as getting that the first Titan off the board. Here comes a couple of bounce lands. Yeah. Now, now, what's really interesting here is that, unfortunately, without Amulet in, in play, we don't really have a way to actually end the game this turn. You could see Canister going for the bounce lands as a sign of, like, you know, next turn, we're going to do some pretty incredible things. Uh, this is definitely a setup Primeval Titan. And, uh, I mean, this is exactly what Mason needs to make it to the next draw step. Yeah, well, this is the sort of game, this is why we have Colbert Colossus in the deck, right? This is literally the matchup for it. I want, I'm going to go get that. I'm going to put it on the battlefield. Not only have a huge threat, yeah, you're probably going to be able to deal with it, but I'm going to be able to draw a bunch of cards, make a load of land drops. And remember, if we manage to get um, the Dried Arbor down, I'm oh, not dry, Dried Arbor down, the Dried Arbor Lysium Grove down, then with the Balakut, that'd be a lot of damage going to the face. Are we seeing a hard cast birds here? All right, oh, I'm just going to... This That's is, this on the is bingo the, list. Yeah, seriously, right? Like, this is the first time and the last time anybody will ever, <laughs> ever see this happen. Eagles of the North actually being relevantly good? Yeah, fair one. It also means that we can't chump block either. It means it's just going to be get to throw underneath the bus. Mason's just ticking all. All the, all of the... Like, anyone's got a bingo card? He's like, Force of Vigor main deck? Check. Play Birds hard cast? Check. 
That is still a, a free, free fly that boosts your team that drew free cards, remember? And with that time walk in hand, potentially could end up finishing the game in a, in a turn or two. But here's Colvier Colossus off the top. Decides not to go that route. We're going to play this Primeval Titan first, get a bit more mana uh, to the battlefield. Now, yes, this is where it gets hard, right? I'm going to ask you, what does he go and get? And um, you're going to be I have no idea. Yeah, I really do have no idea, but it looks like he's answering the question for us here. Ooh. There's a Boros Garrison and a copy of Beseju, and I really like this, because now you good. can unlock the first Primeval Titan that was Leyline Binding it away much earlier, and uh, also being able to do it at instant speed is is pretty, pretty heads up. Yeah, that, that that's, that's, you can, it's, it's just, this is why you, we watch the Super League, right? This is why we watch all these great players. It's for these, these small ink lines, which you don't think of when you're watching or if you haven't picked up the deck before we need like anybody can win with a titan deck it's easy when you go turn one amulet turn two play a uh, dryer turn three play a, uh, a titan give it double strike hate like they're the easy parts of this deck it's this small detail complicated plays that we're seeing here from canister of how we can get back into this match but yeah looks like mason might just want to take another turn you, if you notice that, yeah, I think he, or maybe he was just retapping his mana, but I, I am not 100% sure if this time warp is even like the best time warp. One, one thing that I'm suddenly being alarmed of now, uh, so we have 30 cards left in deck. So obviously the issue of decking is something that I, I am, I'm nervous about, but we need a, a way to close the game because I think if this game goes on longer and longer, it's suddenly going to start favoring uh, Canister, which is kind of weird, you know, given like the fact that Mason's going to be drawing his entire deck, but... In this scenario, like when you think about like what final play is going to be just larger, like, you know, who has the inevitability? I, I think it's the deck that's got all the, the hasty primeval titans and the cultivator colossus is now. I, what is Mason's out in this scenario? Maybe it's something super strange, like, ooh, I love this play, by the way, like, yes. like four copies of Solitude or something. Oh, okay, that's nice as well. Drew the Leyline's Binding. So when this Besage does take out the Leyline's Binding on the battlefield and we get back, uh, Titan, we're we are able to solitude, uh, not solitude, that ley line's binding that one back underneath. Do we get the ETB trigger though? So we get to get two more lands, bounce, uh, potentially bounce lands, potentially more besages. How many besages is he playing in the main this week? Let's have a little look. Let's get that deck list up. It is at least one, two, <laughs> two, two okay. in the main, and one more in the sideboard. So okay. quite interesting. Now, uh, what's 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 pretty apparent here? We do see the blue mana open. We do see uh, the white mana open. So, so Canister, being the intelligent fellow that he is, is probably very, very keenly aware of the fact that uh, there's this is not like a you know a, a, a renegade attack. There's going to be an answer here, and uh, there it is, the leyline binding. So uh, he did pick up another copy of Besaju as a heads up play for that, and now. Um, is probably going to be looking to play a longer, more extended game over the course of the next two, three turns. Probably no. Well, actually, I don't know. One, two, I'm, three. I'm not sure four. if they're going to have two or three turns. I think, like, basically, this, this solitude is huge. That's the card that. Oh, hold on, no, because we had time walk. Yeah, it's just game. Yeah, it's just, two, it's just two, game. Three, yeah, three. Yeah. Oh, that's 10 oh. power. Easy. <laughs> okay. Wow. All right. Well, M Mason. I mean, I guess just it, maybe if you do draw your entire deck, it just doesn't matter. You could oh, just kill with these these wibbly beats. The ice tapping the creature. Yeah, this is this is fantastic. Honestly, we're just flexing here. We're just like, yep, yeah, BBE's back. Love it. Love to see it. Reed's going to be happy. Here comes a big swing for Lethal, and that is going to be game one to Mason Clark. Wow. Okay. All right. I mean, obviously, main deck Force of Vigor MVP. <laughs> like, it's actually just insane how good that is. Um, it actually was really good, which is the worst bit about it. It's like it actually was really good in that match. Yeah, yeah. We get to little, we get a little look to see, you know, how they're sideboarding, what they're bringing in, and what they're bringing out. Mm -hmm. Mason bringing out some beans. Looks like he is Ooh. taking the beans out. So this is kind of interesting. I I did speak earlier to Mason about this, uh, the card Inevitable Betrayal, and how that operates. And it looks like Mason thinks that this card is good enough in this matchup. I'm a little bit torn on it because, I mean, obviously, like. <sighs> You know, you can get their primeval titans. I'm assuming this card works almost exactly like bribery, right? Uh, that you just yeah. get to cascade into. Okay, cool. But I, I really don't like cutting uh, the, uh, the, up the beanstalks because, uh, I mean, that is really what drives your deck. And that is what lets you power through multiple copies of primeval titan. Like we saw, like, you know, I mean, that's kind of why I think, you know, generally amulet titan is able to put up a fight against um, these four color decks is because primeval titans just generates so much value it cascades into another primeval titan which you know not literal cascade but you know 
whatever it generates value into another titan into another titan into another titan and at some point the four color deck isn't able to keep up now with multiple copies of up the beanstalk in play the 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 mathematics on that completely changed. So I'd like to see that we're not just, you know, all ending on this inevitable betrayal, which by the way, like it's not even like taking a single primeval Titan in this matchup is like really just not it. Um, I almost wonder if you even want any copies. So we'll see how this pans out for Mason going into the second game. Yeah, let's have a little look see and see how it's going to go. Remember, so uh, Caroline is obviously, she's a little bit ill this evening. So that is why you've got me and a new doing commentary and, uh, both of these two opening hands, one land. Well, I suppose it's a two lander, right? It, it's it looks like a one lander, but it is a two lander, especially against a non forces deck. Down on Canister's side, looks like we're setting up for like a mid range game. Double ring in hand, not ideal, but uh, you know would have potentially saved him a turn last last uh, game. No turn one accelerant. I've played a little bit of tight, nowhere near as much as what the uh, Mason and Canister play. I've played a little bit of it, but I do watch some popular streamers on it. I'm pretty sure we'll see him mulligan in this hand. Don't think it's going to be explosive enough. Oh, but wow. What do I know? What do I know? Wow. Is basically, what do I know, ladies and gentlemen? That is why. Yo, I'm yeah, Will, you, you look at Matt Dumb right now. The master of Amulet Titan says, no, I can win with anything. Here. This hand, honestly, to me, like, I personally would snap mulligan here, but yeah. I guess. Also, by the way, um, 63 cards in Kansas' oh. deck, uh, deck that he, he put after Cyborg. Just throwing that one out there. Interesting. Interesting observation. Okay, wait. So I guess the plan here is to just like walk up slowly and down smash. I mean, we have two copies of the One Ring. One does, to f my, my question is, does the One Ring out grind the bean? That's, um, where, that's what this hand's telling me. He's like, if he believes he's, he's kind of all in on this... Uh, on the ring, I'll be able to draw more cards and kind of do more stuff than you'll be able to if you have uh, the bean down in your solitudes, etc. It's going to be interesting. Yeah, I think I think what I've learned is that the first copy of the ring can beat a single copy of Up the Beanstalk. The second copy of Up the Beanstalk is like parody. You start like you start to overperform the one ring, and then the third copy of Up the Beanstalk, you're just like you're going way harder and faster than uh, the one ring ever could. Leyland's Biden's going to come down and the turn is going to get that dried off the battlefield. Here comes Ferdland. Obviously, this this uh, common deer might be pretty spicy at some point in this matchup, along with a couple of double solitudes. Mason just wants to be hitting his land drops. Obviously, he's got one more to go if he decides to land cycle or island cycle end of turn. Canister here. We're just going to throw the one ring down. Uh, Do have... Yeah. Big, big problems here, though. <laughs> So, okay, this, this is it. Uh, I say it's a good talking point, but it's not really. I say we're ditching our land to be able to get this one ring, but the one ring is probably going to find us more land. Let's be honest. Yeah, and and I think this is this is incredible. Commandeer is a card that's sort of like picked up as a sort of counter spell of sorts that you uh, can play through the cascade requirements and uh kind of just like it's especially insane in the mirrors where you can like maybe take your opponent's beanstalks or or like whatever value spells here taking the one ring is absolutely insane right like just actually just game ending insane well yeah because basically in your opponent's turn you get to draw a card then you untap and get to draw two more as we see here now we're able to hit our land drops we also have awakened to cast aid and find the bean or a common deer uh, not a common deer, the um the bribery card yeah and, and and I like this play here by by Mason saying like look I could cascade into a bean here if I wanted to but it's more important to keep you off Titan uh, and also I would say you know potentially the one ring but looks like um, we'll have sufficient mana sources to cast this one ring. Yeah, because I you know I am behind on cards, especially card value uh, moving forward. Rings on both sides. We're going to draw. What's the odds on that? The ring actually ends up killing one of these two players. Uh, for Mason, um, negative zero, and then for Canister, even less of a chance because usually you'll be killing your opponent with all the card. Like remember, like I think earlier Mason even mentioned a great point, which is like you know Amulet Titan really does. It's a deck that really can leverage uh, critical mass very very well uh, because it generates so much mana. Is very good at generating mana. Uh, so generally speaking, I would never. I mean, once you have that critical mass, you're obviously alive, and then you'll be able to convert it very easily. Uh, the reason Mason won't die. I mean, it's in play already, right? All math. It helps. Gaining four <laughs> turn helps, I heard, in uh, Magic the Gathering, especially when you're only taking three or two a turn. 
Here comes Leon's buying to answer the ring on the other side of the battlefield. This must be a bad matchup for Titan. It seems so harsh. Everything lines up so well. Yeah, I think like well, what I was mentioning earlier is like against regular four color, you know, you you just generate that value off the ring and amulet. Uh, sorry, primeval Titan. But here, I mean, honestly, the, even though there isn't up the beanstalk in play in theory, that's the card that really breaks this matchup here. Like here, just getting your one ring stolen is very very flavorful. Um, firstly, but it, it, like yeah, that's that's the that's the litmus, right? Is like if the if the four color deck is able to generate ridiculous amounts of advantage, they can keep up. They can keep up and then pull ahead. Well, Colossus is going to be a good way of trying to generate that value. Because remember, the triggers go on the stack even if we do manage to solitude it here. This is uh, one of the you know the, the, the weird lines of interaction of this card, I believe. So doing it now just so he gains less life than he originally would. But all these triggers do happen. So we're going to keep hitting lands on the battlefield, keep drawing them. Okay. Still... Okay, a lot of triggers and another Colossus in hand. So we're trying to kind of do the same next turn. Sage goes to the graveyard because there's two of them on the battlefield. Remember, that is a legendary card. This one gets bounced back to hand. So potentially we can get back the ring if we need to. Unfortunately, no amulet on the battlefield, so we can't generate tons of value this turn uh, uh, or mana. But what can we do on the other side? That betrayal is on suspend. Hard cast on suspend from Momnath and the mana that he generated. I'm not going to lie, that is kind of just funny. We boarded in the inevitable trail, and it's just like slowly ticking down here. I mean, okay, I'll be honest with you. Like, if 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 there was a way for Canister to come back into this game that just seems so hopeless, this was it, right? Now, Mason has to draw four pretty good cards here off of the One Ring, and he whiffs! Okay. Uh, wait a minute. Plot twist. Well, no, because this is going to go find one of the beans. This is going to go into place. And now with the solitude in hand that will deal with the first creature, we'll be able to at least draw another card off that. we still got the Omnaths if we do really want to cast them just for the ETB draw card trigger. Uh, but we're, we're going multiple beans. We're going Value Town now. All the okay. way to Value Town. Yeah, the beans, finding another copy of beans in Shardless Agent was actually a huge pickup here. Now the Solitude can draw a couple cards here, maybe answer the second, uh, find an answer for the second um Amulet, uh, Primeval Titan, or or Cultivator Colossus, or whatever comes down. I guess keeping in mind here that there is a Summoner's Pack uh, trigger on the stack in you know, on the upkeep here, so may maybe I'm, Mason's not dead here. I'm not a fan of the rule that you can't miss that, by the way. I, I, really, oh. don't, I really don't like that rule link. Mm, interesting. But that's that's for another time, another conversation. <laughs> um, well, okay, hold how, up. So Do we have triple green? We do not. Right, we don't have Cribble Green this turn unless we get Dryad down, Dryad, Float Blue, one, two, Dryad, three. No, I don't think we're going to have that super explosive turn, mainly because there's a Force of Vigor on the other side, which can be hard cast, by the way. We're going to go Dryad. It's a logical line that Dryad, oh, no, we're going to try and copy it. And I like this. So we did that with copying it. With it on the stack, so because in response we can copy it again if needs be. Here comes the force of vigor, one mana floating, so we will be able to copy it, uh, copy it one more time. But oh. it turns out that is not going to be enough, and we're just scooping up. Canister got got again by a force of vigor. He said earlier on in the in the in the stream that that's where we get the card is going to get him. He was kind of worried about that being the card in the main, and it, it, it got him. It just got him straight up. Too much for Cancer to handle. Force to make it OP, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs>